Never played the great game by the best was a Scotsman, MacDougall by name. A peaceful spot is Piper's Flat and the folk who live around, they keep themselves by keeping sheep and ploughing up the ground. But the climate is erratic and the consequences are that the struggle with the elements is an everlasting war. So we plough and sow and harrow and sit down and pray for rain and then we all get flooded out and have to start again. But the folk are jubilating as they never did before for we played belong low cricket and MacDougall topped the score. Now Malonglo had a head on it. They challenged us to play a single innings match for lunch, the losing team to pay. We weren't great guns at cricket, but we couldn't well say no, and so we started into practice and we let the reaping go. We scoured the flat for miles around to gather up our men, but when the list was totaled, we only numbered ten. And then up spoke big Jim Grady. He was always slow to speak. And he said, What price McDougal, who lives down on Cooper's Creek? So we sent a note to Mac, and he stated in reply that he'd never played at cricket, but he'd half a mind to try. He couldn't come to practice, he was getting in his hay. But he guessed he'd show the buggers from Malonglo how to play. Now McDougal was a Scotsman, and a canny one at that, and he started in to practice with a palin for a bat. He got Mrs Mack to bowl to him, but she couldn't run at all, and so he trained his sheepdog Pincher how to scout and fetch the ball. Now Pincher was no puppy. In fact, he was old and worn and grey, but he understood MacDougall. And, accustomed to obey, when MacDougall cried out, fetch it, he'd fetch it like a trice. But until the word was drop it, he'd grip it like a vice. So each succeeding night they played until the light grew dim and sometimes MacDougall struck the ball and sometimes the ball struck him. When he hit the ball, he'd spin three times around and when he missed, the impetus would turn him on the ground. At length the fatal day arrived, the day that was to see my long glow bite the dust or Piper's flat knocked up a tree. My long glow's captain won the toss and he sent his men to bat and they gave some leather hunting to the men from Piper's flat. When the ball sped where MacDougall stood, firm planted in his track, he shut his eyes and turned him round and stopped it with his back. The highest score was 22, the total 66, and Brady sent a Yorker down that scattered Johnson's sticks. And then Piper's flat went in to bat for glory and renown. But like the grass before the scythe, our wickets tumbled down. Nine wickets down for 17 and 50 more to win. And the captain heaved a heavy sigh and he sent MacDougall in. <laughs> Ten pounds to one, you'll blew it, cried a barracker from town. But I'll tuck it, mon, MacDougall said, and he planked the money down. He girded up his moleskins in a self-reliant style and threw off his hat and bluchers and paced, faced the bowler with a smile. He held the bat the wrong side out and Johnson, with a grin, stepped lightly to the bowling crease and he sent a wobbler in. MacDougall spooned it softly back and Johnson waiting there and MacDougall, crying, fetch it, started running like a hare. It's victory, my long like light. He's out as sure as eggs. And Pincher darted through the crowd, ran between Johnson's legs. He seized the ball like lightning and he ran behind a log. And MacDougall kept on jogging. And Malonglo chased the dog. They chased him up, they chased him down, they chased him round, and then he darted through the slip rails as the scorer shouted, Ten! McDougal puffed, Malonglo swore, excitement was intense, and as the scorer shouted, Twenty! 
Think you're cleared of barbed wire fence. Let us head him, shrieked Molonglo. Bring the mongrel with a bat. Run him out, good old MacDougall, cried the men from Piper's Flat. So MacDougall kept on jogging and Pincher doubled back. And as a scorer shouted, 40, he raced across the track. MacDougall's legs were going fast. Molonglo's breath was gone. But still Molonglo chased the dog. And MacDougall struggled on. And when the scorer shouted, 50. Oh, he knew the chase could cease and McDougal gasped out dropped and he dropped within his crease. Then Pincher dropped the ball and as instinctively he knew that discretion was the wiser part, he disappeared from view. And as Malonglo's beaten men exhausted lay around, we raised McDougal shoulder high and bore him from the ground. We took him to McDonald's where the lunch was ready laid and filled him up with whiskey punch for which Malonglo paid. We drank his health in bumpers and we cheered him three times three. And when Malonglo got its breath, they came and joined the spree. And the critics say they've never seen a cricket match like that when McDougal broke the record in the game at Piper's Flat. And the folk are jubilating as we never did before, for we played Malonglo cricket and McDougal topped the score. Woo!